and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. Judy McCarthy has great hopes for her family in their new home. But a shadowy presence prowls its dark corners, obsessively tormenting the family. As Judy struggles to protect her loved ones, she uncovers a violent secret that threatens everything she holds dear. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. Beyond the sun-drenched shores of Corpus Christi, Texas, musty gravestones mark forgotten conflicts and silenced lives. But sometimes death is not the final chapter. Often, restless spirits roam the earth, seeking to inflict their eternal fury on the living. In early 2005, the McCarthy family moves from a small apartment in Corpus Christi, Texas, to a house nearby. Judy McCarthy, She's a stay-at-home mom whose first priority is her family. She is always compassionate and supportive of her 17-year-old daughter, Carissa, her husband, John, and her grown daughter, Lisa Lambert. Recently, Lisa was laid off from her job as a human resources recruiter. No longer able to support her son, Jacob, she moved in with John and Judy. Lisa and Jacob are having to sleep on the floor, and we had to get a bigger place because the two-bedroom with one bath just was not big enough. Lisa feels fortunate to have loving parents she can rely on. I asked them for their assistance until I could get on my feet financially. That's how we are. It's just a close-knit family. Hey, we're almost done unpacking. Want to check it out? Yeah. Have fun. Oh, we will. <laughs> Here, let me help you. Yeah. Let me help you. Carissa loves the new house and the fact that she will not have to change schools. Jacob, look. <laughs> nice. Welcome to my humble abode. I haven't had a room this big. <laughs> so I was very, very excited. Can I use your computer when you don't need it? Yeah, just make sure you're asked first. Whoa, what's this? That's pretty cool. There is a water heater that had a door that led into the hallway. And there was also a door into my bedroom. Jacob! Hey, okay, coming, Mom! Lisa, honey, look at this. Lisa and Jacob share a large addition off the living room. Jake, can you help me put these on here? I loved that we had our own section of the house away from everyone, and we would have our privacy. As they finish settling in, a treasured item evokes the memory of Judy's late father. I did everything with my dad. And whenever we'd go fishing, that is the lantern we used. It was my pride and joy. What do you think? Looks good. I think so, too. You don't get anything else? It was very special to her and special to all of us in that way. As weeks pass, the family quickly falls into a hectic routine. John's supervisory position as a diesel mechanic requires him to work long hours. I'll call you later. Oh, Jacob. Mm. Jacob, it is late. We're going to be late for school, huh? We got to go. Mm. When will you be back? I don't know, Mom. It really just depends on the job, but we'll see. Okay. Have a good day, okay? Okay. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Carissa! 
are you up yet? I heard footsteps, and it was a hard step. It's like a man walking with boots on. John? Did you forget something? the bathroom and it was right there just as if it was purposely placed for me to see thanks mom where'd you find it i didn't Was i thought that it was jacob being a prankster moving around my compact but jacob went to school like 20 minutes ago turn into nights. I started to feel a little uneasy. Kind of a vague feeling of being watched. Is everything going all right at school? What is with the third degree? I'm fine. Everything is fine. Gosh. Later, after everyone has left, Judy takes time to relax. Johnson 
Lawson told investigators that during their Los Angeles business, there's no timer on the TV or anything. So I thought maybe there was something wrong with the batteries. Weeks pass. Eerie sounds continue to echo through the house. Judy finds comfort in having her family around. Two Jeffs. Especially on nights when John works late. Okay, you got me. <laughs> Did you hear that? What do you think it was? It sounded like it came from my room. It was probably just the house settling. Whose turn is it anyway? Mine. It's an older home. You're expecting to hear some type of noises. Stick them up and give me all your eights. Uh, no. What makes you think I've got any eights? <laughs> you had to have heard that. I'll go take a look. I was a little anxious. We thought somebody had broken in. I didn't know what was in there. I didn't know what was gonna happen. It's freezing in here. I got goosebumps, the hair stood up. My closet. My heart kind of dropped when I saw that my closet door was actually open. I always kept my closet door shut. False alarm. I know I left my closet closed. Honey. Oh, Carissa. No, I always shut the door. I just assumed that for the noise, she had left it opened a little, and being in an older home, some of the wood slanted a little, and then it just slid open. Honey, if you did shut the door, how did it get itself opened? Weeks pass without incident. Oh, I hate for actions. It's not that hard. It's like the sizes on wrenches. Guess what? We are celebrating. Oh, I got a job oh, as a corporate trainer. Oh, <laughs> really? 
I was ecstatic. It wasn't just a job for me. It was going to be my career. You rock, Mom! My son was thrilled just because eventually we were going to be on our own. Oh, well, let's party. Come on. Yeah, we'll celebrate. Come on. Pop the cork on that thing. A few hours later, after Jacob and John have gone to bed, Jacob, get back to bed, young man. I'm thinking somebody's playing a trick on me. And we don't have another remote. Mom, what's wrong with the TV? It, it just, like, just came on. Oh. I thought it was Jacob. Who's been doing this in the mornings? I tried changing the batteries, but it hasn't stopped it, apparently. It just turns on and flips channels. Knowing that somebody else in the house was experiencing similar things was very comforting. I'm starting to think the house is haunted. Oh. You know, I, I think it might be Grandpa. He was always such a practical joker. Maybe it's I thought it was my dad checking in the house to make sure that everybody was okay. But why would he start this now? He's been gone for years. Lisa has her doubts. She just wanted to have him in the house with us so much that she wanted to grasp onto that possibility that it's him. You know, I, I've got a huge day tomorrow. I think I'm turning in. <laughs> Me too. All right, Carissa. The following weekend, Judy decides to treat the kids to a day at the mall. 20 minutes in the toy store today, okay? Okay. And Lisa, why don't you come with us? The break will do you good. Yeah, Mom, take a break. You know, guys, thanks for the invite. I really need to stay and fill out this paperwork. You go. I can't find my other earring. I put it on my dresser a few minutes ago, and now the other one's gone. So wear another pair. My stuff keeps disappearing, and this never happened before we moved here. Are you playing a joke on Carissa? No, and I didn't touch her stuff. Jacob, look at me in the eyes. Are you lying to me? You think I'm lying, and I'm not going to the mall with you. Fine by me. Carissa's personality started changing. Little things would set her off, and she was never like that before. Later, around 3 AM, I wasn't imagining this. It was within a foot of that window, if not closer. I would have seen them walk away. I would have at least seen their shadow, heard their footsteps. I could smell smoke, like there was something burning, maybe in the living room or in the kitchen.
You must give me a heart attack. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. What are you doing up? I smell <gasps> smoke. It seemed like it was coming from this room. I sure don't smell any now, though. Mom, it wasn't the smoke that woke me up. Really? What was it? I heard men outside talking. And then when I looked to see them, they, they weren't even there. Something weird's going on, Mom. Judy believes the voices are connected to the haunting. That's when I realized it couldn't be my dad. That if he wanted to say something to me, he would have done it a long time ago. And that's when I finally realized we have a problem. Can you keep it down? I have to get up in three hours. I'm sorry, honey. There's just some weird things going on here. We think we might have a ghost. A ghost? You got nothing better to do at three in the morning? I'm going back to bed. You should do. I'm so sorry, honey. He hasn't experienced any of it. I know. Thank goodness Jacob hasn't either. No, look, let's just keep it that way, okay? My daddy. My concern was, Will he come in contact with the spirit? Will it start bothering him? Nothing unusual happens for several days, and Lisa's concerns fade. Carissa, however, continues to sense an unseen presence watching her. Nice! Nice buns! All right. Because the feeling is most intense in her room, she has suffered a string of restless nights. And the pitcher retires another batter. And the pitcher retires too. Come on, play a little more. I'm poop, squirt. Please. Jake, I said no. Night after night, not being able to go to sleep. I was definitely tired all the time. The sleepless nights stretch into weeks. Hoping to calm her uneasiness, Carissa leaves a light on each night. Something was about to pop out at me. She tries to convince herself that it's just her imagination. was in my room last night. But it isn't Grandpa. 
I knew it wouldn't be my grandpa because I wouldn't be feeling scared and vulnerable like I was. Oh, honey. Judy wishes there was some way to comfort Carissa. Although she still feels uncomfortable being alone, Carissa presses on. business again you're 17 you're too old to be sleeping in your parents room my dad never wanted to believe in the supernatural crying won't help he, he thought that I was being very irrational not to think about it. I felt like I had to be strong and tough it out. too scared to look or move or do anything. I just laid there frozen. My heart started beating very, very fast and I got very, very frightened. Move my body, and I just felt like there was a huge weight on me. Her going back in that room. The following morning, 
Judy seeks some assurance that Carissa will not suffer lingering effects from the ghostly attack. I couldn't breathe. I just kept gasping and gasping. Sounds like panic attacks. Have you been depressed lately? No. She's having a lot of trouble sleeping lately. And we think we have a ghost in the house. Carissa, I think something else is bothering you. Although Carissa is fine, Judy's fears for her safety persist. Come on, Carissa, let's go. I was thinking, how can I protect her against something I can't even see? Judy struggles to find some way to keep her daughter safe. I think that's it. It's all up and running again. Oh, wonderful. I love heat again. You know, I was wondering what would happen if we needed to get out of the lease early. Why? Well, we think there might be a ghost here. If you try to break that lease, you owe me the rest of the year. And if you don't pay up, I'll sue. Whoa. Nobody's trying to break the lease. I think you need to talk to your wife. I want it out of the house. I didn't want any part of it. I want it to move. We're not going to move just because you think there's ghosts in here. John, you're away at work all day long. You come home and sleep. You're never around to see what's happening around here. He told me that it was just our imagination, that we were being stupid and silly and everything. A few days later, Carissa stays home from school to recover from a bad cold. about the most frightening thing Did you to see something going into Carissa's room and just disappear. My heart dropped. Everything beforehand had just been hearing things and feelings. But seeing that just made everything that much worse. The ghost's increasing boldness terrifies We've Judy. It seems to be growing not only stronger, but more focused on Carissa. You saw it? Oh, my God. We gotta get out of here now! Okay, listen, Mom. Go somewhere safe until Dad gets home. And I'm gonna see if I can find someone who can help us. Lisa finds Margaret Prescott's paranormal research team and arranges for them to come out as soon as possible. That night. John, when you're out of town, we're gonna have some paranormal researchers come over. I need this, John. Judy warns John about the impending investigation. I finally made him realize I really needed to find out what it was that was in this house. Soon after, while John is out of town and Jacob is staying at a friend's house, paranormal investigator Margaret Prescott and her son, technical expert Monty Prescott, meet with the family. The goal of my group is to help people to understand what they're experiencing, what they're going through. All right, um, we'll be setting up the cameras throughout the house, but mostly where you've had activity. Like my room? Especially your room. Where my heart went out to this family was seeing the fear in her eyes, like something was coming after her. Where do you want us to be? We're going to need everyone to leave the house. That way we can be sure that the activity we pick up is paranormal and not human. Monty will be in the garage. He's setting up a viewing station, so he won't disturb the house either. The team has set up infrared cameras and digital tape recorders. They hope to capture paranormal activity and ghostly voices known as EVP, or electronic voice phenomena. How's it going? It's going pretty good. I think we got a nice shot of the hallway. 
We got a really nice shot of the bedroom here. That's where most of our activity has been happening. What was that? Something just hit the camera. My reaction was that they don't want, didn't want our cameras there and they did not want us there. I'm gonna go fix that camera. Be careful. I will, call me if there's a problem. Margaret knows any ghost who can move a camera is powerful enough to inflict physical harm. I just had this feeling that there was something inside this closet, and it just wasn't very nice. She tries to provoke the ghost in order to elicit a response that can be recorded as EVP. Prove to me you're really here. I try to get from them, why are they here? Why are they tormenting this family? Move something. Come on, show yourself to me. a connection with whatever is in there. Who are you? What are you doing in this house? Answer me. If you don't want me here, make me leave. What's happening? This really strange feeling that traveled up my legs and just started traveling up to my arms. Get out of there! It's like the air is just being sucked out. And it was really getting very hard to breathe. <laughs> Judy's worst fears. The ghost is powerful and violent. You're gonna need a cleansing. And I'll do those, but I can get you in touch with some people who do. Well, can they do it right away? I I've gotta protect my family, especially Carissa. I was so scared for her. This was her room and something was invading it. It'll be about a week or more. That long? Well, you can try to cleanse the house yourself. Judy is willing to accept any risk to protect her family. Go to each room alone with a Bible, and you order the spirits to go away. Thank you. It'll be okay, okay? We'll keep in touch. All right. All right. The following morning, despite her fears, Judy is determined to bless the house. Mom, you know, I, I'm just really not comfortable leaving you alone to do this. Let, let me call in and take a personal day. I was very concerned, Margaret had said, that two things could happen. You could either really make the spirit angry, they could retaliate, or they will actually leave you alone. Lisa, you just started your job. Please be careful, Mom. I had had a gut feeling that it wasn't gonna make things better and that it might make things worse. I'm gonna do this. 
In God's name. Judy blesses the house Please room by room, saving Carissa's for last. Leave my family alone. In God's name, please leave this house. Leave us alone. In God's name, please leave this house. Leave us alone. Leave my family alone. In God's name, I command you to leave this house. Get out of this house. like there was someone standing right beside me. I didn't know what was gonna happen, and I couldn't breathe. <laughs> the thought that I had done something I shouldn't have. the house, but I heard angry knocking on the walls. That means it's not going to leave. I need you to hear something. the confirmation of what this entity wants. And it was very frightening. He's obsessed with Carissa. He wants her. Her rejection is making him so angry. She might have reminded him of someone he once cared for a great deal, and he did not want to let her go. Knowing that is your flesh and blood, that whatever this thing is, wants. What am I going to do? How am I going to protect her? There was a murder in the house. Margaret's research has uncovered a drug-related murder that occurred in the house 20 years earlier. You know the smoke that you smelt and the argument that Lisa heard? They're all replays of that event. killer set a fire to destroy the evidence. Get Carissa out of that house as soon as possible. The next step is that this girl is going to get harmed in some way. It's building it more and more strength because his family's afraid of it. Oh, my God. Carissa is due home from softball practice any minute now. I can't have her in that house alone. Where's Carissa? Still at softball practice. Oh, thank God. Why? John, we have to move. What? The ghost is obsessed with Carissa. Margaret caught him on tape, saying he wanted the girl.
John, we have to move. I was determined nothing was going to get her. <laughs> well, that's about it for us. Within days, Judy finds a house nearby, and the family quickly packs for the move. Now you and Jacob come and visit us sometime soon. Lisa and Jacob relocate to an apartment across town. Don't be a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that about does it for us, too. I just need to get one more box for my room. OK, hurry up, honey. I was never so happy in my life, but we were going to move. so scared. I mean, I didn't ever want to let her go. Overwhelmed by their fear that Carissa's life is at stake, the McCarthys refuse to spend another second in the house. It was like the weight of the world had been taken off my shoulders, knowing that nobody in my family would have to put up with anything like that again. Hold that pose. Several months later, Carissa recovers from her ordeal and graduates from high school. Soon after, she secures a full-time job and begins taking college classes. You're smart, but that's a dumb hat. You can't oh, wait Jacob. to wear one, can you, Squirt? <laughs> Once we moved out of the house, nothing bad happened after that, and everybody's doing really good now. But the months of constant fear for her daughter's safety will forever haunt Judy. It's a feeling that I hope to God I never have to feel again. And I don't ever want anyone to have to go through that with their child. experiences tragic loss <laughs> she finds light in the darkness i thought it just has to be my husband mike is that you letting me know that he's still here someone or something is here and it has a message the entity wants you either gone or wants you dead <laughs> i don't think i'll ever be the same again <laughs> in america there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see in my room. and the things we fear, 
There are doors when they are opened. Nightmares become reality. In the summer of 2004, the Stowe family is living the dream, a perfect moment frozen in time. Come on, let's play. We had a very idyllic life. Your typical suburbia, you know, mom stays at home and raises the kids. Honey, come here, I feel her kicking. Oh. We got married in 1999. Our son was born in 2002. We were expecting our daughter. You ready to meet your little sister? Yeah. 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 <laughs> My husband was a very easygoing man. He was a good dad. He was a good husband. We got along great. I used to wonder, how did I get so lucky? <laughs> Suddenly. Stacy's happiness is shattered by a disturbing vision. Honey. Honey, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I didn't tell him, but what I saw was our car in an accident. All right. Oh, hold on. Have a seat. Oh, it's work. My husband had just started a new job. Hey, this is Mike. He was an IT manager, and he loved computers. All right, I'll be right in. And I've got to go. What? Tell Server's me. down. I'll be quick. I'll pick up dinner soon enough to cook, OK? OK. Mwah. Wait. Are you sure you have to go? Yeah, they can't do this without me. Are you sure you're OK? Yeah. Yeah, I'm OK. okay. I just kind of shook it off. I was pregnant. I thought it was just hormones. I didn't tell him what I felt. Time stands still for Stacy who can't seem to shake the eerie vision. For Mrs. Stowe. Oh my God. Yeah. When the police officer came to my door, I knew that my premonition was coming true. And he said, Okay, ma'am, I don't want you to panic, but there's been an accident. Sir! Sir, can you hear me? And then he goes, I'm sorry, he died. <laughs> sorry. And I started saying, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this alone. <laughs> After her husband's death, Stacy picks up the pieces of her life and carries on as best she can. A lot of widows that go through something like this, they cannot stand to stay in the house. I, on the other hand, I could not leave. This is our home. My husband and I built this home. He's here. I can't leave. Bryn is now nine, and her brother Cameron, 12. 
Today is a special day. Stacy and her late husband's wedding anniversary. What are you doing? I'm setting a place for dad. I never got to meet my dad because while I was in my mom's stomach, that's when he died. I'm very into video games and computers. I kind of want to be let the same job as my, my dad had. Cameron, put your game away. Put your game away. I'm almost done with this level. It's time to eat. <laughs> you can play later. Ooh, looks good. Cameron was very easygoing, just like his dad. Um, just an easy kid. Bryn, do you want to say grace? Sure. My son is my husband. And Bryn is me. It's for rain and sunny weather. And Bryn is extremely smart, even at that age. My daughter was like a little adult. Thank you, Lord, for this, our food, and that we're here together. Amen. Amen. It was a tough thing to cope with, but as a family, after my husband died, I tried to keep things as normal as possible for them. This looks so good. One afternoon, my kids were gone, and I was cleaning. I was like, where did this come from? What is this? And the teddy bear was holding a heart, and inside the heart was an orange stone. And it was like a light bulb went off in my head and I went, oh my gosh, that's my husband's birthstone. Mike, is that you? I thought he's just letting me know that he's never really actually gone anywhere. He's still here. A few days later, Cameron is hanging out in the living room. I started feeling really hot, and I looked over and saw the fireplace was on. I just kind of got a weird feeling. I felt like something was in the room with me. Something's wrong with the fireplace. What happened? It, it turned on by itself, twice. Well, I seem to be working fine now. Where'd you get that? Did you take that from my room? No, I found it on the table. Come on, aren't you going to the movies with Charlie? Yeah, go get ready. My thing was, oh, it's my husband. He's playing a joke on us. That's what I figured. I was strangely comforted by it. It was a way of helping me to cope with the loss that I would tell myself, although he's not here physically, I know he's here. I can feel him here.
Honey. Stacy Stowe has been feeling a presence in her home. Honey. Honey. When I got the courage to turn around, I saw what looked like an indentation on the bed. Although Stacy's frightened, she convinces herself it's her husband. Mike, is that you? Who died in a tragic car accident years ago. I thought it just has to be my husband. My heartbeat slowed down, and I just kind of took a deep breath and fell back into a peaceful sleep. So far, Stacy is the only one who has sensed the spirit of Mike in the house. Their two children, Cameron and Bryn, have not. from that dream, I was terrified. I was scared. I didn't know what to do. Mommy! Mommy, 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 please wake up! Please, mommy, mommy, please. I was sitting there crying, and my mom didn't know what was going on. What happened? <laughs> this thing in my room is trying to get me. It was just a nightmare. It was huge, and it had these eyes. She was crying, just tears streaming down her face. What happened? Is she OK? Yeah, she just had a bad dream. Go back to bed, sweetie. I was really worried for my sister. OK. <laughs> my mom just said that everything was fine. It's just nightmares and nothing else. You can stay with me. Come here. Come here. <laughs> I'm so scared. It's okay. <laughs> At the time, I thought, well, all kids have nightmares, and they go through nightmare stages. I thought, you know, that it was normal, and it was OK, and everything would be fine. It's going to be OK. Over the next few days, she replays the incident in her mind again and again, not fully convinced it was a dream. I was like, this is real. No, stop it! Help me! It was just horrible. I was in my room, and all of a sudden, it was like something was in there.
He looked like my dad, blue eyes, brown hair. Daddy? It's me, honey. I've been watching you. The face just started transforming into black. Nine-year-old Bryn Stowe once again sees an evil monster. But this time, it's not a nightmare. It was the same figure than the dream. It was the exact same person. It had the cat eyes. She was so terrified. It was unlike anything that I had ever seen or heard her do. Calm down, honey, honey. Mom, calm down, calm down. What's going on? It's in there. There's something in my room. There's something in your room. Yes, there's something in there. Okay. Wait, Ian, wait, wait. Do you see it? It's in there. Honey, there's nothing there. What, what did you see? I saw Dad. Oh, Bryn, I, I... I knew he was here with us. I've been feeling him, too. You don't understand. It wasn't Dad. It was a monster. No, no, no. What are you talking about, honey? Are you sure he wasn't just a bad dream? No! She's like, no, Mommy. He was there. I was not dreaming. It was real. Honey, be OK. <laughs> we'll figure it out, OK? We'll figure it out. I'll be OK. I'll be OK, sweetie. Thinking Bryn is just having night terrors, Stacy moves her into her room until they pass, while 12-year-old Cameron continues to sleep in his bedroom. I went downstairs to get a snack. The whisper started in the kitchen. I couldn't tell where they were coming from or what they were saying. I looked around, I didn't see anything. It was about six feet tall, looked like a man. It looked like it had a face, but I couldn't make it out. I could only see its eyes. It was probably the scariest thing I've seen in my life. Mom, I saw it. It was here. He was shaking. He was trembling and his face was just drained of color. His eyes were just huge. My son is not a child that is easily shaken, but this definitely shook him. He was very afraid. I've never seen that kind of fear. What happened? I saw a dark thing. It, 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 was, it was like a shadow. It, it had these glowing eyes. It just hit me, wow, now my son is describing the same thing that my daughter is describing. OK. It's OK. It's going to be OK. It's going to be OK. 
can I sleep in your room tonight? Of course, sweetie, of course, okay. This is not right. This is not my husband. My husband would not be terrifying my children like this. This is something else. At that moment, I knew my house was haunted, and I knew I needed to get help. Stacy contacts a paranormal group who puts her in touch with the person experts turn to when all else fails. My name's Johnny, and I classify myself as a cleaner. What I do is fairly straightforward. I go in, I clean a residence of the entity or entities, and that's my sole purpose. They were in danger. This is a kind of case where the entity wants you either gone or wants you dead. There is a very dark presence. Most people would call it demonic. Demonic? When I found out from Johnny that the big thing that had tried to get my daughter was demonic, I just wanted to get my kids and run. Demons or demonic energy take on your worst fears in your mind and portray them. If you think it's a demon, you're going to perceive a demon. If you think it's Satan, you will perceive that it's Satan. I believe we need to do a cleansing as soon as possible. Just tell us what to do. I am at war with the entities in this home. It's a spiritual war, so you may not see anything, but know they are here. During the cleansing, I push my mind through the house, and I go from side to side. The dark entity that I'm after, all I see is a massive black blob. And sometimes it'll attack me. Something grabbed my ankle. in this home. With the help of a paranormal expert, the Stowe family is waging war against a demonic entity haunting their home. The entities will try to the last second to attain what they think is theirs. And in this case, they decided that they weren't going to let go. I was just terrified. I was scared that a demon was trying to attach itself to me and take me with it. I felt just completely powerless. And I was screaming, no, no, you can't have her. Johnny jumps into action. You are not welcome here! I focus all my energy into one place, and I go, bam, and it slides out. Be gone! Everything just stopped, and the air felt easy to breathe. Ah, Brynn, Brynn, Brynn! Oh, oh, okay. Is he gone? Oh, Is he gone? He's gone. You're safe now. I hugged my mom and she was like 
this worked, it worked, it's gone. But Johnny warns Stacy that although they are safe now, the family could be vulnerable to new entities. Children attract negative energies because they're so open. They haven't built up um, the ability to fend things off. Johnny told me when you clean out a house, anything that is outside the house is going to sense that void, and they're going to try to get in. Over the next year, the Stowe's grow more and more confident that the cleaning worked. It felt good in the house. I felt safe, and I felt like I was able to go anywhere I wanted in the house. So I was sleeping in my room. I was fine. Hey. You OK? I think so. If you want, you can still sleep in my room. Mom, I'm fine. I just knew my house was mine again, and it was just done. This new beginning was exactly what my family needed. I heard voices whispering, screaming at me. We're going to get you. We're going to kill you. super scared. I thought I was crazy. I wasn't sure if this was real. It was my mind playing tricks on me. I didn't know. I saw all around, they were trapped. They were banging, screaming, let us in, let us in, help us, help us. Nine-year-old Bryn Stowe believes she is trapped in a living nightmare. Ah! 
I wasn't sure if it was my mind playing tricks on me. I didn't know. I was terrified for my life. She showed me the scratches, three vertical, angry red scratches. They looked almost like you got scratched by a cat. I was trying not to lose it in front of her. I was trying to be calm, but my heart, it was racing. Um, so let's go clean it up. Come on, come on. I was at my wit's end. It's back. And this time, it has gotten physical. Oh, it actually threatened her. It hurts. <laughs> Instead of calling Johnny the cleaner, the family decides to try a new approach. Claudia, thank you so much for coming so quickly. Of we course. just don't know what to do. Oh, One minute. Stacy reaches out to a gifted clairvoyant. My name is Claudia Granger. Originally, I'm from Germany, and I'm a psychic medium and a teacher and healer. When I tuned into the house, I felt immediately a very dark, extremely nasty presence. There was a ceremony here, a seance. I see two girls, teenagers. They're related to you. My nieces, they watched our house when we were on vacation. That, that, that was right before all this started. My nieces were very close with both me and my husband. My husband and I practically raised them. They put some candles on. They put their hands together in a circle. And they were calling on their relatives. They were calling on spirits. We're reaching out to connect with our lost Uncle Mike. Are you there, Uncle Mike? Can you hear us? I believe they were trying to contact the spirit of your late husband. Oh, my husband? My God, what did they do? Uncle Mike, are you there? We really miss you. What was that? What? Nothing. Come on. They've opened up a portal at your house. That's why all of the activity has started up again. A portal? It's like a doorway to the other world. If not properly closed, it can be very dangerous. It allows spirits and other entities to come through. I could see the portal directly in Bren's bedroom. Please talk to us. The girls got scared and screamed and left, and so the circle stayed open. When a circle of energy is broken abruptly, it creates like a rift in existence, and that rift then can widen. In that moment, it was a free for all for the spirits, whoever was close by, to come and visit. That's when the negativity could really come in. I think that your family is in danger. We need to close this portal right away. I need you all to join hands and remain in constant prayer with me. And no matter what happens, I want you to keep praying and stay focused. OK? 
okay? I need you to envision a golden light filling the room and surrounding your house, okay? She just told us all just to concentrate on that, envision the happiness and the love and the light. You ready? Let, Let love, love and light stream forth from the heart of God onto this earth. Seal the door where the evil dwells. May heavenly light be anchored in this house so that it removes the dark and becomes a gateway to heaven. Let love and light stream forth from the heart of God onto this earth. Seal the door where the evil dwells. Let love and light stream forth from the heart of God onto this earth. Seal the door where the evil dwells. Let love and light stream forth from the heart of God onto this earth. Seal the door where the evil dwells. Keep praying! For more a haunting, visit destinationamerica.com. Let love and life stream forth from the heart of God. The Stowe family is fighting to close a portal in their home with the help of psychic medium Claudia Granger. Stream forth from the heart of God onto this earth. Seal the door where the evil dwells. Let love and light stream forth from the heart of God onto this earth. Seal the door where the evil dwells. Let love and light stream forth from the heart of God onto this earth. Seal the door where the evil dwells. Keep praying. Let love and light stream forth from the heart of God onto this earth. Seal the door where the evil dwells. I opened my eyes, and at that moment, I just knew instinctually that it was finally over. It's closed. My house was mine again. Thank you. <laughs> I felt like a giant weight had been lifted off my shoulders. <laughs> Maybe you want a cup of coffee before you go, or? Yes, please. You OK? Yeah. But before she goes, Claudia has something very important to tell the family about Bryn. Bryn, may I speak with you for a minute? Yeah. Bryn, I believe that you have a very special gift. I think Bryn is psychic, and that's why the activity in the house focused on her. When I looked into Bryn's eyes for the first time, I instantly knew that this was a psychic child. Bryn seemed to have been uh, targeted by the negative spirits of the portal because she could see them. I kind of knew that there was sensitivity. I had a feeling that she had received the gift. I was thinking, this makes sense now. All the puzzle pieces are just coming together. I understand. Prince said she saw her father. I think the demon disguised itself as your dad to gain your trust so that you'd let your guard down. I was angry and for it to masquerade itself as my husband was like the ultimate betrayal. What do I do if it comes back? I can train you. You won't have to be afraid anymore. She felt like we needed some guidance on how to learn how to protect yourself. What kind of helped me a little was that Claudia told me, you know, I'm going to help you. I'm going to guide you through this. Everything's going to be OK. I'm here. Come on. 
Over the next few months, the family is able to move on from the horrific ordeal. As of today, my kids are both thriving. They're doing well in school. I know that they're happy. I'm happy. And he said, go! I was really happy that we had our house back. Woo! And that me and my sister could play again and we could just be kids and not have to worry about everything that was going on before. Before all this happened, I was a skeptic. <laughs> but then after this dark, terrifying chapter in our lives, it has now hit home that there are things out there that we know nothing about. There is no question in my mind. I believe very much that it is real. I don't think I'll ever be the same again. I think this has affected my life and I'll never be able to, you know, change. I think I was given this gift to become confident, to help other people with things like demons in their house. Maybe she is going to do something that will turn this world on its ear. She's gonna do something big. Ozark River Valley once stood as the gateway to the west, the last outpost of civilization before the frontier beyond. But nestled amid this lush countryside lies a different kind of portal, a crossroads between life and death, where the mortal and the eternal collide. In October 2003, Jamie and Ben Shea's search for a larger home leads them to Markham, Arkansas, an hour outside Little Rock. It's got some character to it, doesn't it? It's beautiful. Well, it's so historic. It was just absolutely beautiful. It had big, old, old trees all around it. And it was just the picture of the house I've been looking for all my life. Built in the late 1700s, the home is one of the oldest in the state. I'm kind of a history buff, so that definitely piqued my interest. Ben can already picture raising his three children there. I knew that my kids could run out there and you know, just have a good time. I grew up that way, M me running out and playing in the woods, and I definitely wanted that for my kids. Did the agent give you a key? The house is a short commute to Arbutus, where Jamie is a legal assistant. Ben is earning his degree while working nights as a nurse at a local factory. It was in between the two towns where my husband worked and where my husband went to school so he could spend more time with the kids and not have to be traveling back and forth as much. Not so bad. I thought the walls would be peeling or something. I know. It looks like everything's in pretty good shape. There was a lot of room. I could totally see how the kids would have plenty of room to play. I knew as soon as I saw it that we had to have that house. 
We need to make an offer on the place before anybody else sees it. Okay, maybe we should look at the rest of the house first. Okay. Wow, this is great. Ceilings don't have any water spots. The roof must be in great shape. It's almost too good to be true. <laughs> I'll say. Oh my god, what is this? Uh, I wouldn't worry about it. The fireplace had all kinds of markings on it, like the name of this boy that had died, pentagrams. It takes a lot to kind of spook me, so I was just like, oh, some teenager, you know, lived here before. And I the Shays remain me. enthusiastic about the house. Looks like a nice fireplace. Shouldn't be boarded up anyway. You think it still works? We decided right away the first thing that we would do is get rid of that. But other than that, it was just perfect. <laughs> Within a few weeks, the family is all settled in. Wow, it's beautiful. D did you pick up those colors, Bridger? Yes. The couple's three children, eight-month-old Jackson, five-year-old Bridger, and 11-year-old Tori are delighted by their new surroundings. Oh, that's Taylor calling for me. Again? Did you get this many phone calls when you were her age? I am just glad that she's adjusting to her new school well. Give me one more. The Shays quickly fall into a busy routine. You guys need to hurry up, because it's time to get to the bus, OK? Jamie hires an experienced sitter to watch the baby during the day. Hi. Hey. Uh, ben, this is Molly. Molly's going to be here with Jackson until I get home, OK? Sounds terrific. Ben works all night, so he'll be asleep. Till about 2, and then I'm off to class. Bye. Mm. Get some sleep, OK? Okay, um, call me if you need anything. Everything's gonna okay. be great. Mm -hmm. Bye, Jackson. Can you please get the baby? I knew for a fact I wasn't dreaming there was a baby crying out on the monitor and there was nobody home. It was a very creepy moment. Unsure what to make of it, Ben keeps the strange incident to himself. A few nights later, Ben trudges off to work, reminding himself that graduation is only a few months away.
Richard, what are you doing up? I'm scared. People are talking in my room. <laughs> Who's talking? Tori? No, it's not Tori. It was just a bad dream, Richard. Um... Now go to sleep. My first thought was, did I leave the television on in the living room? I did a little quick listen, and it was completely silent. Later that night, around 3 a.m., Scaring her brother, Tori does not tell him that she has also heard strange sounds. No, I, I it was probably just a bad dream. You're just adjusting to your new bedroom. That's all. None of the shades mention their individual experiences. For the next few weeks, Time passes uneventfully. Despite the demands of his hectic schedule, Ben spends time with Bridger before leaving for work. And the old gray octopus swam back into his dark watery cave at the bottom of the sea and never, ever came back out again. The end. We did it again. Oh, it's getting late, kiddo. Give me a kiss. I love you. I love you too. Get in bed. Close ben eyes. hopes that after he earns his degree, he can work normal hours and spend more time with his family. Mommy! Are you saying goodnight to Daddy before he leaves? I gotta go to work, buddy. I wish you didn't have to go. Me too. Love you. Love you too. Bye. Good night. Kids in bed for the night. Jamie takes advantage of the quiet. Tori, is that you? Bridger, Tori, get back to bed. 
I kept hearing my kids running up and down the stairs. Oh. Kids, get back in bed! The door was wide open. It didn't slam. I thought it was pretty creepy. All three of the kids were sleeping and I was the only one in the house besides the kids. weekend. The eerie occurrences nag at Jamie until she can ignore them no longer. Molly told me the weirdest story today. She said that she heard crying in the baby monitor and when she went upstairs to check on Jackson, he was asleep. She said it looked like he hadn't even been crying. The other day I heard crying on that thing. Jackson wasn't even home. Somebody's up. Well, it sounds like it's from down here. It's gotta be Bridger. I'll take care of this. It sounded like a, like a, a ball bouncing. I went to check on the kids and yell at them for being up so late and messing around. And, and you know, of course, everybody's sleeping. Well? They're all asleep. You know, these, these old houses, they make all kinds of noises that you can't explain. It's getting late. I'm going to bed. You coming? I'll be there in a second. All the strange occurrences suddenly make sense. At that moment, I did start to get the feeling that we were living in a haunted house. Jamie visits the local library, hoping to learn more about ghosts and hauntings. I'll finish this up for you. Okay. Brenda will finish helping you. I can't help noticing what kind of books you're checking out here. Are you interested in learning about ghosts? Yes. I grew up in a house that was haunted. Was it around here? 721 Franklin. Jamie is astonished. It's the house where her family now lives. She started telling me about a boy that had fallen out of the window and died. And he had fallen out of the room that was Bridger's room, where he had been hearing the voices and the, the people talking. He 
I felt the color just rush out of my face. Everything makes sense now. All the little things that had happened that I thought, you know, someone's trying to play with us. Did you ever feel afraid? I mean, did this ghost ever hurt anyone? I just think he was looking for attention, you know, poor little guy. You let me know if these help you. The next morning, Jamie eagerly awaits Ben's return home from work so she can tell him what she learned. She worries about how living in a haunted house may affect her children. No, you have to wait till it's cooked. It only takes eight minutes. Hey guys, what you doing? Daddy! Daddy! Hello? I'm making cookies. Ooh, I see you're putting your Saturday morning to good use, huh? Mm -hmm. Bridger, your hands are sticky. Why don't you go wash them up? Can you help them out? Okay. Bridger, don't touch anything. <laughs> ben, I talked to somebody who's lived in this house before. What'd you mean is that? She works at the library. I met her there. She says that there was a ghost in this house. A little boy. Little boy. I don't know what I feel about living in a haunted house. It was a scary feeling to know that we weren't the only ones there. Well, did she say that the ghost ever hurt anyone? Yeah, she said it never touched anyone. Ben assures Jamie that the little boy's ghost will not harm their family. Then we'll be fine. I didn't feel like it would really threaten her. You know, I just kind of thought maybe this haunting stuff will kind of die down. As the holiday season arrives, the activity quiets down around the house. Someone was standing right behind me. So we're gonna stop. I'll put in the paperwork. Let me uh, grab that. First aid. Ben, thank God you answered. Jamie, what's wrong? I felt like I was being watched, and then suddenly I looked up and I saw him on my computer screen. You, you saw who? Ben, I didn't get a good look at who it was. Right, but... What happened? It was evil. I'll try to come home early, I promise. It was very frustrating. And, and not being able to be there, I felt totally trapped. That was probably the first time that I felt threatened. I didn't feel like it was a little boy playing games with us. I knew that this was something different. Jamie wonders if the woman who saw the boy's ghost ever encountered the other spirit. Is, is Brenda working? I'm sorry, Brenda no longer works here. Do you know how I can get in touch with her? I'm afraid not. She left with no forwarding address or telephone number. Did she leave the area? I think so, but I can't give you any more information Look, than that. Look, I am just a friend trying to get in touch with her. Is there something I can help you with? No. Thank you. I was really disappointed because I thought this is going to be at least an answer to what we're dealing with here. Although days pass without incident, the dark presence continues to weigh on Jamie's mind. Aren't you forgetting something? Oh, my briefcase. Hey, uh, don't forget to pick up Tori after school. She's over at Megan's. I forgot. Okay. Yeah, I really had a real just eerie, kind of sick feeling in my stomach.
really dreaded going home. It was starting to not feel like a home anymore. You enjoying working on that group project you and Megan are working on? Yeah, I, I'm finishing it now. Be great if you didn't hit all the bumps. Sorry, honey, there's road construction. Thought we'd have some pause tonight. How does that sound? When I got out, Tori was under the minivan, pinned face down with a, the weight of, a, of the entire minivan on her, and I thought, she's not gonna make it through this. How was she? I think her back would be broken. Oh my God. They didn't know exactly to what extent she had a broken back. And so we were obviously concerned about whether she could ever walk again. It terrified me to not know. Okay. I believe Tori may have compression fractures to several of her vertebrae. I thought back about the events of the day and feeling like I was being watched and that whole feeling that I had before we had the wreck. I started to wonder if there was some kind of connection. Right now, I just have to wait. <laughs> Two weeks after the accident, the hospital releases Tori, just in time for Christmas. Although her doctor expects her to make a full recovery, Tori will be bedridden for several months. What are you doing here? Get I like this. Here. She could not walk without help, so I took a leave of absence from work because she needed pretty much constant care. You sure? Are you okay? Bridger, that's Tori's scooter. It's okay. He can ride it. It was an awful Christmas because we had just bought her a scooter. Don't worry, you'll be up and around riding on that thing before you know it. The scooter is kind of like a, like, hey, you know, you will, you will walk again. You will be able to ride the scooter eventually. You're not paralyzed. Thank the good Lord for that. Come on, Tori. You heard what the doctor said. You are young and strong. You are going to be up and about in no time. Weeks pass. Jamie is so focused on Tori that she barely notices any paranormal activity. I really didn't think of anything else other than I wanted my daughter to be okay. Bridget, what are you doing up? People in my room are talking again. What are they saying? I can't understand them. The good boys and the bad boys all talk over each other. What bad boys? Who are the bad boys? I don't know. Can I sit with you and Dad? Okay, you can stay with us tonight. He's sleeping with us tonight. He's hearing voices again. I'm gonna go check on Jackson. Hey, buddy. Uh, you okay? Did you hear something scary? Jamie's relieved to find Jackson sleeping peacefully, unaffected by the voices that plague Bridger.
just don't feel safe anymore. I don't think I can handle it. I feel like we are being watched all the time. But there's no way we can go anywhere until Tori is better. I didn't care whether the house was haunted or not at that point. We were just gonna take care of our daughter, get her walking again. Well, we can start looking now and I'll put the house on the market and see what kind of offers we get. In all our free time. Yeah, really. I loved this house. Yeah. Me too. talking about? I didn't touch your hair. <laughs> Seriously, I didn't touch you. urgent need to get everybody into the same room and that way I could protect them in some way. Little man, we are just gonna sleep right here. Somebody please just tell me what's going on. Just a little excitement, that's all. We've gotta find somebody who can help us. We cannot live like this. There was an evil presence in the house that was out to harm us and it wasn't the boy. It was something else. It was starting to show itself more. And I knew we had to do something. The Shays contact the Central Arkansas Society for Paranormal Research. They arrange to come to the house as soon as Tori is well enough to be moved. This is ridiculous. I don't understand why I have to go. I need you to go with the boys and help Molly out. It's only for one night she's gonna bring you back in the morning, okay? Thanks, Molly. We really appreciate you doing it such a last okay. minute. Take the kids out to get some pizza tonight, okay? okay. I'll call. <laughs> the team of investigators arrives and sets up for the night. We need to change these tapes. I don't want to. Alan Lowe's goal is to find physical proof to explain the paranormal occurrences. His wife, Angela, and their daughter, Violet, are psychics. The women in my family have always been very psychic, sensitive, open to the spirit world. Violet's gift goes beyond sensing. I'm probably classified better as a medium. I can talk to them and they can talk to me and there can be sort of a two-way conversation. The house makes an immediate impression on them. And when we walked in the house, it had sort of a depressing vibe. You know, it just felt heavy. I've done some research on the house and it verifies what you've heard. Karen Schillings tries to connect the supernatural events to the house's history. Built in 1780, it once served as a hotel and stagecoach stop, and later as a county jail. Why would that cause the house to be haunted? Oh. Alan that explains story. that the house's rich past and could account for the presence of spirits. The because it served as a way station of sorts. We'll walk through the house and see if we can sense any hot spots of spirit activity. When I got 
got to the top of the stairs, it was a sinking feeling. And it was definitely coming from that direction of the house towards that room. Alan sets up a video camera where the psychics feel negative energy. senses of presence. She thinks it wants to make contact, but is too frightened to approach her. I felt like somebody walked in the room. Don't be afraid. I mean, he was human, but he didn't look like he was really standing there. He was sort of see-through. Will you talk to us? There's something else. Someone else is here. We felt like he'd been scared away by a very strong negative presence in the house. It was like a whole sea of people. They weren't happy, they seemed pretty miserable. It felt like they didn't want you there. Like you shouldn't be in this room. It didn't look human. This presence was something different and it was really terrifying. And I haven't been afraid of a house or a ghost since I was a young child, but this one scared me. Psychics tell Jamie and Ben about the little boy and the multitude of human spirits they encountered. Those are the voices your son has been hearing. And inform them there is a negative presence in the house. We don't know what it is, but with your permission... Angela hopes to communicate with it in order to learn more. One of the paranormal team people suggested that we find out more details about the spirits by asking them questions through the Ouija board. And I really didn't believe in the whole Ouija board thing. Skeptical because a Ouija board can be easily manipulated, Ben handles the planchette. Me and one of the paranormal team guys did the Ouija board while other people were asking questions. What is your name? the dark spirit and learn it calls itself Seth. When were you alive? physical person who had died. This was a demon who had never lived. 
to know that you've actually been in the same house with some sort of demonic presence and knowing that it could do harm. It definitely uh, it scares you. The planchette's erratic movement indicates Seth is extremely powerful. Have we seen you? Pointing to the camera. When I saw the figure on the video screen, I knew right away that it was the same figure that was looking down on us the day that we had the car accident. And I got that same sick feeling in my stomach. Can you think of any fortune-telling, conjuring, devil-worshipping that might have summoned a demon? Not us, but, but when we first moved in here, we found pentagrams and candles in the bedroom. We thought it was just a bunch of kids messing around. They might have opened a door they shouldn't have. A door? A portal to the other side. Show yourself to us. Unleash your powers. Whether it was those kids or someone else, evil had been invited into that house. Angela fears for the family's safety. The spirit was so negative and so evil and so aggressive that the possibility of the family being in danger was very real if something wasn't done. I recommend she cleansing. recommends a ritual cleansing to clear the house of the evil spirit. <laughs> The planchette just started going crazy, almost like in a figure eight, just around in circles as fast as it could go. It was really, really scary. Seth wields the planchette, expressing his rage at the decision to perform a cleansing. We knew that Seth was totally against this and was trying to stop us from doing it. He definitely didn't want us there and he didn't want us doing the cleansing. Using a Native American tradition, they burn sage to bless the house. The sage is used to cleanse areas of negativity so that you can see clearly into the spirit world. And in our prayers, while we're doing the cleansing, we ask the Heavenly Father to protect this family and fill the home with white light and rid it of any negativity. Let no evil come in. Let no evil torment this family. Protect this household. Let no evil come in. Let no evil torment this family. Protect Jackson. Protect Bridger. Protect Tori. Protect Ben. Protect Jamie. Protect this family. Protect this household. Let no evil come in. There was heaviness against our chest like we were being pushed back. He was trying to literally push us out of the house. Angela and Violet continue their struggle to rid the Shea House of an evil entity that calls itself Seth. It was pretty clear to me that it was resisting so strongly. The air was getting thicker and thicker, and it felt like something might grab you at any moment. Protect this family! Protect this household! a circle of salt that will guard the house from Seth's return. Will you draw a line around the house to protect it from evil? When we finished the cleansing, the entire atmosphere had changed. Although the house has been cleansed, the human spirits will remain. I immediately felt a sense of peace in the air. 
I felt that the sense of evil had been lifted. Thank you. Thank you very much. For the next several months, life for the Shea family returns to normal. Sure. All right, two it is. Here we go. Well, hello, sleeping beauty. Fortunately, Tori makes a full recovery. You want some pancakes? Yes, please. Can I have mine with grape jelly? You sure can. Nothing but the best for you, sweetie? Who breaks their back in three places without being paralyzed? She's, a, she's definitely a miracle. So we're very, very grateful for that. Come on, Jamie, it's the weekend. Look, I'm glad you're back at work, but can't just wait till Monday. No, I have a meeting first thing. Look, I'll, I'll take the kids to the fair tomorrow. You can have the whole house to yourself. I've been studying finals all week, and I haven't seen you. I guess I could take a break. Bridger, are you okay? Bridger? Talk to us. It wasn't Bridger sounded kind of wicked, and it just cut right through me. Bridger! Uh, Dad, what am I doing down here? Bridger, you stay here with your daddy. I'll be right back. You okay, buddy? Make out two voices. It just kept getting louder and louder and louder. I was just coming to get you. When I saw that thing at the end of the hallway, the first thing I thought was, oh no, we're not starting this again. We're getting out of here! Although the cleansing forced Seth out, the house remains a portal to the other side. You okay, little man? I'm fine, Dad. You sure? Where are you going? Go, 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 go. Using that doorway, a new demonic presence has emerged to take Seth's place. It was still haunted, and it was going to stay haunted, no matter what we did. The Shays know that if they stay in the house, dark entities will continue to prey on them. Ben and Jamie immediately put the house on the market and moved to an apartment nearby. A few weeks later, Ben finishes school and the family starts a new life in a new town. We are a much tighter family outside of that home. We're not dealing with the constant stress of being haunted. Nice. You taught him well. I always thought when I was younger that it would be kind of cool to live in a haunted house. I would never want to experience that again. Soon, another family moves into the house. They hear the ghost boy playing. But have yet to encounter the demon that plagued the chaise. 